You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. You wanted it. You got it. A radio program that helps teach you options trading inside and out. Basic to complex. This is Options Boot Camp. Whether you want to learn how to protect your portfolio, generate income, or even become a master of volatility, your Options Boot Camp drill instructors, Mark Longo and Dan Passarelli, will break it all down for you. Options Bootcamp is brought to you by Tasty Trade. Ready to shred your paper trades? Then trade at Tasty Trade, the broker that gives you what you need to make your own way. Get smarter every day with options education and research tools. Analyze your risks clearly with a potential profit and loss graph. Chart your way with hundreds of indicators. Make the numbers make sense and find the opportunities only you can see. Trade it with fewer clicks on an easy-to-use platform. Mobile, desktop, web. Supported by a trade desk with decades of combined experience. Stocks, options, futures, and more. You choose, you trade. Get what you need to make smart moves. Go to tastytrade.com slash pod to see for yourself, genius. Tasty Trade Incorporated is a registered broker-dealer and member of FINRA, NFA, and SIPC. Fall in boot. It's time to get into peak options trading shape. It's time for Options Boot Camp. All right, everybody. That music means we are back once again. It is Education Wednesday time for another wild and woolly session of Options Boot Camp, what the cool kids call OBC. My name is Mark Longo from the T-H-E, OptionsInsider.com, as well as from the network upon which so many of you are mainlining these days. If you're one of our many newer listeners, you're new to the world of options, you're new to this whole options trading thing, first off, welcome. You've come to the right place. Got over a decade worth of content waiting for you. So if you are so inclined, I know a lot of you are so inclined, (laughs) your dedication is always impressive to me. Uh, You can always go back to episode one, or you can start somewhere in between. You could scan the titles, see what floats your boat, whatever suits you at the end of the day. But welcome to the world of options. Welcome to the world of OBC. Make sure if you are new that you do subscribe to the full network. There's nearly a dozen shows coming at you throughout the week. A lot of great stuff coming at you, including more education We have a great archive of Options Playbook Radio waiting for you there as well. Very much the sister show to this one, kind of on a bit of a hiatus right now. Brian's uh, doing a couple of new things out there, but I'm going to be talking to him actually ironically later today. He's going to be the guest for our pro Q&A session for all of our pro folks. So I think he's going to have a little bit more insight on what the future holds, maybe for some new episodes of OPR coming down the pike. So check that out. Of course, check out the rest of the network as well. Volatility Views, Option Block, all sorts of fun stuff waiting there for you. If you do like what you hear, Throw some stars, a like, a comment our way. Just like this week's five-star review comes from Matthew. He just says, fun show in an intelligible format. Thanks. Well, you're welcome, Matthew. And to everyone else out there who takes the time to listen and rate and review. does help all the new folks we were just talking to, all those new folks, continue to discover the content. And when they discover the show, they also discover, unfortunately, my compatriot, the black-hatted one himself, Mr. Dan Passarelli from Market Taker Mentoring, what the cool kids call Mm to um. Mr. P, welcome back to the show on this fine education Wednesday, sir. Great to be back, Mark. Uh, pretty, pretty excited to be doing boot camp from my uh, 
actual world headquarters here instead <laughs> yeah. of uh, on the road. Yeah, two weeks on the road. That'll make anyone appreciate <laughs> the old world HQ out there. But we can hear you. You don't sound like you're coming through a tin can anymore. Uh, so all sorts of fun is ready to be had. Dan, are you ready to open up the floodgates and unleash the Kraken upon us in the form of listener questions? I am, man. Let's do it. All right, here we go then, listeners. A little bit of the old mail call. Mail call. Time to look at questions submitted by our listeners. All right, everybody. It's that time. Time for your questions out there. Let's kick things off. Paying off our question of the week from last week. It dovetailed nicely. A lot of you have been writing in with your questions about the vol space. I think that episode we did a few months ago about the various vol ETFs out there, how you could trade them, Contango, VIX Futures, all that kind of fun. I think that really prompted a lot of thought from you, which is good. That's what the show is about at the end of the day. We've seen a lot of you coming in and discovering our Volatility Views show as a result. And also... Have a lot of thoughts on your preferred Vol products out there now. We've been talking about some of you writing in with your various ways to approach these, and there's many different ways to carve up that onion. So I thought we'd put it to you folks last week. Very simply, this was kind of inspired by our pro Q&A last week as well, which, by the way, if you want to check out the pro Q&A where where we talk about this topic as well as the one coming up later today with Brian Overby and all the other great stuff we've done there, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro is the place to go. If you hit that button now, uh, you'll be able to join, won't be able to join today, obviously, because this will go up after the pro Q&A is live on the network. But you'll be able to get in for options oddities later this week. And of course, our next pro Q&A, you get access to all the hundred plus that we've already done. Trust me, there's a lot of great question answering in there already for you, as well as a hundred plus options oddities. You're talking 225, 250 episodes waiting for you there. The second you hit that button, there's a lot of content there for you to take it down. But we asked you last week, Prompted by a discussion we had with Mr. At Vixologist in our pro Q&A last week. Just very simply, what is your favorite volatility ETP? ETP, of course, is exchange-traded product that covers ETFs, exchange-traded funds, ETNs, exchange-traded notes. All kinds of fun stuff covered under that ETP umbrella. We gave you four choices, four of the most popular choices. SVIX, that's an inverse vol product. Uh, UVXY, it's a levered but somewhat neutered vol product. Uh, VXX, one we talked about a lot on that episode we did a few months back, one of the ones that erode somewhat predictably, and one that's in the headlines a lot right now because it just reverse split exactly a week ago today, 10 for 1. Uh, this is Uvix, another lever. This is a 2 for 1 levered product out there, so it attracts a lot of attention for that point, and of course, it got down to somewhere around below $2, and they just reverse split it. It got back up to almost $40 with all the madness going on in the market right now, so this is a very interesting one. And surprisingly, at least surprising to me, Dan, 38.4% of our audience at the end of the day came in and chose UVXY. Uh, That surprises me because that one erodes nicely, erodes predictably. That erosion trade we talked about on that episode, that does play out nicely in UVXY. But if you're going to do that trade, you might as well go to the 2X levered product of UVX. And for some reason, our audience didn't want that. 38.4% choosing UVXY. A uh, 27.2% coming in for number two SVIX. They'd like a little bit of inverse vol. That one's a little bit challenging from an options perspective because the spread's not quite there. The liquidity not quite there yet. Underlying wise, it's been a good year for that one because vol has mostly gone down. So SVIX has shot up. It's more than doubled this year. So I can maybe see people being attracted from that perspective. Options wise, though, not so much. Uh, VXX, 21.6%. It's very well documented the problems that product had over the past year. It is trying to recover from those now, starting to perform more predictably. So I could see that one coming in. Third place sounds about right. And then bringing up the rear, Uvix, our levered friend, which is eroding spectacularly. And it's moving seven points a day sometimes. That thing's insane. Completely insane. I detailed the saga I had of some UVIX, excuse me, uh, puts and keeping them through the reverse split listeners and all the drama that unfolded. A spoiler alert, don't do it. But uh, it was a pretty fascinating discussion. Uh, we talked about that on our Options Oddities program last week. So check that out on the pro side if you want a detailed discussion of that. Uh, but Mr. Dan, 38.4% of our audience choosing UVXY versus the more heavily levered UVX kind of surprised me. Uh, VXX having a decent showing. SVIX also having a surprisingly strong showing. So 
Kind of some surprising results across the board. What are your thoughts here from our volatility poll last night? A very contentious one. A lot of people writing in. By the way, before I even get your thoughts, we had listeners chiming in. We had our pro member, Age Del Aquaria, saying, I hate them all, but if you make me choose one, I'll choose UVXY. He went that way as well. I have to ask him why. Funny, I was just reading about the last days of TVIX. Or, oh, we didn't even include that one. God, don't get me started on TVIX. Another one of these Frank and Val product listeners that just imploded under its own weight. Completely insane. Yeah, if you want some fun and or disturbing reading, uh, check out the saga that is TVIX. Listeners, good stuff. Uh, Vittorio Menente writing in for SVXY. So kind of the other side of UVXY. We didn't even include that because why would we? But Vittorio likes it. And then Ubernot writing in with a great gift saying, buy the dip. Short the VIX and F Bitcoin. So uh, there you go. <laughs> All kinds of thoughts. Uh, Mr. Dan, obviously this poll inspired a lot of debate. Uh, what are your thoughts on how our audience came down on the ball side? Yeah, I mean, I'm not super um, not super surprised, I guess. Um, you know, S VIX, you know, if it's short, I mean, I don't know. I guess there's some nuance to trading it, but like... I always, I've always had a weird thing about the short ETFs, you know, like don't people know how to buy puts or sell calls, you know? So not surprised at that. And UVIX is pretty levered. I don't know. Yeah. Seems about right, I guess. Dan gives it a big, I don't know. I like it. Well, Mr. Dan, you know what you do know and what our audience has been waiting patiently for. We had one last week, but they're kind of hard when you're on the road. I get it. So now you're back in the studio. Now you can really deliver, sir, with your much-anticipated market taker question of the week. What you got for us, sir? Yeah, so I've been getting this question actually a lot sent in to me. Um, <clears throat> that is, Dan, it's earnings season. Are you going to be sharing some earnings trade ideas? And that answer, of course, is yes, because I do that every quarter. And uh, this time around, we are actually holding a special online training. And you can get an invite to that when you go to markettaker.com, click join free, and that'll let me know to send you an invitation to our uh, online training. Well, there you go, listeners. If you have a question about earnings trading, uh, Dan's got you covered. All right, Dan, put on your question answering pants because we got one here for you. Uh, this goes back to what we were talking about last week, listeners, with the wheel. Uh, this is from one of our pro members, Robbie, Robbie Brewster. And uh, he, he's coming at you with both barrels, Dan, so buckle up here. <laughs> oh, boy. Here we go. Robbie says, I was excited for a show on the wheel because I have been using it for a few years, and it was an actual, he puts in parentheses, epiphany for me many years ago. So there you go. He's along the wheel epiphany lines from you last week, Dan. Because, however, I was sad that Mark teased the wheel 200 or the wheel 301 strategies and then tossed to Dan, <laughs> who ranted for most of the show <laughs> while driving over speed bumps <laughs> and, and basically talked in circles. <laughs> With some holy crap, man, interstitial. Well, he does get your interstitials down well. I'll give him that. He he does do a good virtual impression of you, Dan. He says, isn't the essence of the wheel that you pick where you want to sell or own a stock, and then you get either taken out or assigned with a better basis, and you keep the premium and try again? What was all the, quote, I sold a call for 90 cents and then bought it back for $1.90, so then I sold it again for two ninety. dollars talk? Uh, he ranted about people not owning their, quote, handshake with themselves in the first half, and then described how he breaks the promise and buys back calls that are in the money and sells them again. I wish he had explained why he did that. I thought the rules of the wheel were a, quote, pick a place to sell or buy and own the trade no matter what. What am I missing here? Where was the talk about wheel 301? I want some 301. He added in. He had more to say. So I get that it's not a single trade, but a series of trades point. As Dan put it, it's not the spokes in the wheel. It's the wheel. But nobody talked about how and why they decided to buy back in the money options before expiration instead of letting them expire or execute. Under what circumstances does it make sense to buy them back versus just getting taken out or put to and then adjusting the next trade? That's the 201 or 301. Can we do a show on that? All right. Let me start here, Dan, while you collect your thoughts here. But first off, Robbie, the 201 or 301 that I was alluding to was actually in the episode we did the week previously. I was doing it with our buddy, Mr. Matt Amberson from Orat's. Uh, he came on because Dan was obviously traveling, 
And we did a deep dive into the wheel there. And when I mentioned 201 or 301, it's because Matt, you know him, he's always back testing some crazy esoteric flavor of a strategy. And when he's doing that, he discovers interesting ways that things tend to work out. Uh, he's more of, of a risk mitigation guy, so he doesn't like just selling the put outright. He likes to sell a put spread. So in case the worst comes to pass, he's not holding the bag all the way down on that stock. And when he started doing that, he started back testing that, he realized you can actually look at diagonals instead and it gets into put calendars it's a very interesting approach i won't put words in his mouth i'll let you go listen to that episode so hopefully ravi after you listen we wrote to you said hey check out that episode so hopefully you listened to that uh, because that's an interesting approach to the wheel i have to say i've been doing this for a long time and not one i had considered before adding that kind of calendar element to the wheel trade the put leg in particular also we mentioned this additional because everyone's got the wheel on the brain now. Everyone's all fired up about the wheel. We've really got you folks excited for the wheel. And hey, I love it. I love that you folks are responding. Because you folks are interested and because it's also a very different audience in this show, we also took another deep dive into the wheel again with Matt and also with our buddy, Mr. Uncle Mike Tussaud, uh, on the Advisors Option Program. A whole hour, basically, most of that spent on the wheel. Uh, Matt kind of spent more time detailing his put calendar and diagonal approach. And also uh, Uncle Mike coming at it with a very interesting approach with in the money calls versus selling the put. And again, not a flavor I had thought about in the past. So there were a couple of different ways you could really jazz up your wheel 201 or 301. So I encourage you and everyone listening to this show, again, that's why I say subscribe to the full network. It's all there. The advisors option just came out a couple of days ago, I think on the on-demand side. So go check that one out. I think it's called Coming Around Again on the Wheel Trade, if you missed it out there. So if you want a a second exploration of Matt's approach, as well as Mike's in-the-money covered call approach, which, again, combining the two, you've got a very funky wheel going on, but that's kind of the fun. That's The wheel can be as basic or as complex as you need it to be, Robbie. All right, that said, I won't answer for Dan any further. Dan, Robbie wants more detail from you. Uh, and essentially what you meant by he puts it, sold the call for 90 cents, then bought it back for a dollar ninety, then sold it again for two ninety. And also he wants to know if you have any thoughts on in particular your rules for buying back the short put versus letting it expire and the stock be put to you. Yeah, he sure sent us in this manifesto. Uh, <laughs> for those of you who have listened to the show for a long time, we kind of have a, uh, I won't call it a rule, but some guidance to keep them short. A little bit more leash to our pro members. They get to send in a little bit longer stuff sometimes. It's like a novella over here. <laughs> You're just mad because he's coming for you. I get it. I get it. Don't worry. There's some, there's some love after this, so don't worry. Yeah, okay. I mean, geez louise, if I wanted to get criticized, I'd call my kids, you know? Or your wife. They'll do it too, probably. Uh, you know, she's nice to me. Um, That's nice of you. Jeez, Ravi. So uh, sorry for ranting. Uh, boy. So, yeah, if you listened to the show, I said that there's uh, the handshake with themselves thing is very important. And you can call it a rant if you want to be brash like that. But uh, I thought it was very important to really hammer that point home because sometimes you want to trade into a position or out of a position and sometimes you want to skate. <clears throat> and so there are two different objectives that you can pick from. Not one as you as you somehow got out of that conversation. Um, and so the adjustment that I was talking about selling a call for you know, 90 cents and it goes against you because you don't want to get assigned on it, which may be your motivation sometimes. And then buying it back for say a dollar nine. <clears throat> and then I don't have the, you know, the transcript of the thing in front of me, but what I, I didn't say you sell the same call again. What I said is that you roll, basically roll up and out and, you know, maybe you take in on this third trade, <clears throat> third call, um, 80 cents or 90 cents or a dollar, a dollar 10 or whatever. And a very, very important thing to really get the, the wheel and to trade it right is to look at that as basically one single trade cycle. And you trade the trade cycle until you make money. 
uh, and then you recycle, you start to cycle over and it resets. <clears throat> so that's more for the trade objective, although it can also, or excuse me, the skates objective, although it can also be used for the objective that you're implying is the only objective to have here, which is to uh, be okay getting assigned. You can still be okay getting assigned and you can still roll. That's a very key technique that we teach in our MTM smart income class, which is all on, which is all on the wheel is that even if you plan to get assigned, you can still roll out another week and just sell it at the money or slightly in the money to take in still more premium. And there's some nuance to that, but, um, you know, I mean, I don't know what else to say. Uh, you're kind of nitpicky here. So, um, yeah, hopefully that, uh, helps. And I think you know, tackled it. And also I think he definitely would be well suited to go back and listen to the previous episode and the one we did subsequent to that with Dan and Matt again. So there's three, really that episode was, Dan's chance because he had been on the road and he missed the wheel trade episode just to give his thoughts uh, on how he approaches the wheel. It wasn't a structural how to do it. That was kind of the episode before. Uh, so it was more kind of his kind of 10,000 foot level thoughts on how he approaches the wheel. And again, we want to include that that mess, not just because it's a pro member, but also we can take constructive criticism. Maybe Robbie was a little harsh, but I'm sure he meant it <laughs> in the nicest of ways here. But again, it's not all love. We'll, we'll take our constructive feedback, too. We're, we, we're big boys here on the show, listeners. But we do like a little bit of love, Dan. So how about this one here uh, from a longtime listener, Stephen Womack, Dan. He says, hi, Mark and Dan! Uh. Exclamation point. And that name sounds familiar. He has written it in the past. He says, I've been a little quiet on the question front lately, but still listening religiously to, in all caps, every single episode <laughs> of Optimus yeah. Bootcamp. So he's the guy, Dan. He's the guy going all the way back to episode one and mainlining all the way through the past decade plus until now. He says, it's still the best options education uh, show (laughs) out there anywhere. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. So there you go, Dan. There's love coming your way here as well here on the show. We give and we taketh away on the show today. (laughs) He said, he's got a question here. He says, I've been trading options now uh, for about two and a half years, approaching 1000 trades and loving it. Wow. Congratulations to you, Steven. I remember I recall when you writing in a while ago and you were just starting. So it's already been a couple of years. So congratulations for A, surviving this long and B, getting to a thousand trades. At this point, with this market, with so many people discovering options now, two and a half years kind of makes you an old school vet. (laughs) Scary to say, but that's kind of how it is. So enjoy your antiquated status as an old school options trader. He says, I recently did my first toe tipping into zero and one day options on cash settled index funds. Specifically, NDX and SPX. Oh, you too, Stephen, huh? You've been lured to the dark side. All right. He says, a couple of the trades expired completely out of the money, so the settlement was easy. I just kept the premium. Uh, But a couple went against me. And when I went back to my brokerage platform, and he puts in parentheses, he uses toss. He says, suddenly there was a flurry of transactions I couldn't even decipher. One iron condor, oh, so he's doing multi-leg spreads. He's doing iron condors. Uh, one iron condor had like two transactions per leg, and it took me forever to untangle the numbers just to figure out how much money I lost. And I'm still not sure I understand how this settled out. Would you guys give us a detailed step-by-step explanation of how cash-settled options work? Thanks again for everything you guys do. You're great. Well, thank you, Stephen. No, you're great for taking the time to write in to listen all these years, to go back and listen to all of our episodes. Folks like you are the reason we do this show at the end of the day, because you keep us in business. You keep driving up. Well, you keep my bandwidth bills high, so thanks for that. But uh, Dan doesn't pay him, so he's happy about it. But we, we do appreciate all of you folks out there who take the time to listen and write in with all types of comments and questions and concerns and critiques out there as well. All right, cash settled options. I got some uh, ideas here. Uh, but Dan, before I dive into them, uh, what are your thoughts in particular here for uh, Steven cash settled versus the physically delivered? And then any uh, insights you want to share here or explanations for our longtime listener and fan, Mr. Steven Womack. Sir. Yeah. Hey, Steven. How's it going, man? Uh, thanks for the kind words. And uh, I love that even after a thousand trades, you still strive to get better and better. That's awesome. I have the same strategy as I think, you know. Um, so that being said, yeah, cash settled is, um, in a lot of ways, it's really very similar, um, to 
regular options, you know, a physical settled, uh, except for the fact that when assignment comes, basically, if you're long the option, you make the in the money value of that option uh, on the expiration date or following the expiration date. And if you're short the option, you lose the in the money value. <clears throat> so the advantage of that is, you know, you well, <clears throat> There's a lot of nuance to them. One of the advantages to think about is that in a sense, you don't have pin risk where you're short and at the money and all of a sudden you come in Monday thinking you're not going to get assigned, but you do get assigned and you ended up long or short, you know, shares and the stock goes against you. <clears throat> so that can't happen, which is nice. And you can't get assigned early because they're typically European. And also... On the other side of that, though, is some of these are AM settled. And so even though you don't have traditional pin risk, it's uh, like if we're taking SPX, for example, it stops trading on Thursday afternoon, but the settlement price comes Monday morning. <clears throat> so if you're short some at or out, even some out of the money options, if the market moves through your strike and those are in the money, you could be, you know, if you're a professional trader like a, a gamma scalper or market maker and you're trading hedged, you could end up having, you know, some futures hedges that you didn't, you know, that, that you no longer need. And if you're short options, it's negative gamma. So it's going against you. Uh, there's a lot to talk about on those. I, I kind of dropped some uh, knowledge bombs. Hopefully that's enough to get started on it. Uh, I'll kick it off to Mark and see if he can fill in some gaps I left. Yeah, let's let's fill in some gaps here. Let's go to a couple of examples. You asked for some specifics on this. And again, Stephen, if you have a, a trade that is confusing you and how it's being settled out by your broker, if you want, people send us screenshots of their trades all the time. You can feel free to blur out any account sensitive. Dan and I are not going to use your accounts. Don't worry. But if you want to send in some screenshots of how they're showing this to you, we can maybe help decipher that to you as well. That'll also help us have a little bit more detail to work with in terms of answering this. Uh, my supposition on why it's so complicated for you is that you're not using a single leg trade. You're using an iron condor. Remember, listeners, that's four legs. Uh, so once you're doing that, you're going to have multiple legs expiring in the money. So you're going to have debits and credits flying fast and furious, which is probably why it was so confusing to you. Uh, but let's dial it back from the four leg. Let's just go straight single leg, long call, the way a lot of people are going to approach this, and then we can get fancier from there. Uh, your typical long call. So in a traditional, in a physically settled equity option, let's say, listeners, our old favorite XYZ, XYZ closes at $110 on expiration Friday. So that's where your options are going to expire. Uh, you're long one XYZ call that's expiring that day. It's from the 100 strike, so the 100 strike call. So you can see right there, $10 in the money. Now, in a traditional account where your options are expiring and settling into stock, physically settled, physically delivered accounts, what's going to happen is you're going to have to have the money to buy that stock for the strike price, $100. So remember, every option, you own one, every option is for 100 shares. So 100 times $100, you need 10 grand in your account to buy the shares at $100. Now, that's going to happen. You're going to go into the weekend. That stock is going to settle into your account. Remember, you can't just instantly sell it after the close and say, okay, I got the stock for 100 I could sell it for 110 and capture that $10 differential. It's one of the challenges with the physically settled options. Uh, you have to wait for that stock to settle, and usually it hits your account the following Monday. So there's that literal weekend risk sometimes. You're sitting there with a long underlying position. It's got a $10 value on it when, you, when the stock had closed on Friday. But look at this past couple of weekends. There's literal weekend risk. That could go away very easily. It can be an opportunity, too. I know in the early days of options, people used to play with that three days of float over the weekend to try to game the system before they had to put the money in or close out the position. Those days are kind of going away, but you still have that weekend risk with that position. Now you come in on Monday, let's say the stock for our purposes is still open, still at 110. You can now take those 100 shares that you bought for $100, sell it for 110 in the market and collect that $10 difference, aka $1,000, aka $10 times 100 shares. So you can see there's a lot of rigmarole with that. 
which is why some people preferred the cash settled. Uh, there's the weekend risk. There's a time for the stock to settle into your account. There's a substantial debit required to buy the stocks, and you can then turn around and sell it. Uh, there's a lot involved with the physically delivered. That's why we typically on this show and on the network counsel you, if you have these positions that are about to expire, you're usually better off just selling them in the marketplace. And that example, you could probably sell that call for somewhere close to 10 bucks. And just get all that profit without having to deal with all that nonsense and the debits and everything else. Uh, the few times where maybe it doesn't behoove you to do that is when the option is very deep in the money. And then the spreads might get a little wide, in which case maybe you're giving up too much. Maybe you have to sell that call really for nine fifty or less, and in which case you're just giving up too much money. It's better off doing it yourself. But there is risk involved in that. So that's your traditional or your physically settled uh, option. Now let's go to the one that's confusing you, even though ironically it's a lot simpler. Cash settled. Some benefits of this. There's no stock hitting your account. There's no stock flying fast and furious. As you point out, it's just debits or credits to your account at the end of the day. So same example, XYZ closes at 110 on expiration Friday. You're long one cash settled now, 100 strike call. Uh, Same deal. You have all the same profit potential. But what happens instead of having the debit at the end of the day to buy the stock, and then waiting for the stock to settle, and then selling it out on Monday and hoping you can capture that $10 differential in the stock. Instead, guess what? Your account is just instantly credited that $1,000. Remember, those options are $10 in the money, so you're going to just simple math, 110 minus 100, which is your strike, that's $10, times the 100 shares that every contract is for. So you're talking $1,000 in profit. Guess what? That's just credited to your account. Nice, simple, and hopefully easy. It sounds like what you're encountering is a little bit more obscure, but usually it's a much simpler process, which is why you have to have cash settled to trade all that zero-day stuff because you can't have, at least right now with the way our systems work, it's really hard to have underlying flying fast and furious. Of course, there are contra exercise orders in the after hours. Someone who maybe has options in the money doesn't want that option to expire into stock. They have a window after the close to enter those contra exercise orders. So there's a lot of things gumming up the works for quote unquote traditional physically settled options going zero day. Obviously it can happen. We do see options on their final day of trading in a weekly, let's say have an earnings announcement, have a banger day, a million plus contracts and all of that going up in effectively what is a zero day contract. So it can happen And I think we're going to be heading towards that eventually. Uh, But right now, there's a lot of pushback. People want to keep that contra exercise stuff. And there's actual talk of, maybe this will confuse you more, Stephen. There's actual talk of listing cash settled equity options first. So making a new cash settled, let's say, Apple or a cash settled Tesla. And those go through the exact process we're talking about here. They just give you the debits and the credits. There's no underlying changing hands. And once you remove that underlying component, Now you make it easier to have a zero-day type of product, and then we could have zero-day cash-settled Apple and Tesla and everything else that you folks are always asking for out there. So that's a basic example of the difference, Stephen, of cash-settled versus physically settled. If you have more questions, feel free to send them in. Also, if you want to send in screenshots from your brokerage account, sometimes brokers make this stuff needlessly obtuse. They don't really need to show you all of the debits and credits for the individual leg. Hopefully somewhere in your toss screen, there's a button that will show you the net P&L for that position. Sometimes brokers are their own worst enemy. They give you too much transparency and it makes it hard to figure out what the hell's going on. Here's your net debit or credit for that position. That would be nice. Hopefully you have that in your toss screen. Uh, But there's a a basic breakdown. Anything else you want to add on physically versus cash settled options, Dan? (laughs) Uh, no, I mean, I think just, uh, sort of my introduction of trying to hit a couple key points and your sort of more broken out, um, you know, linear example here, it should be a pretty good start, Stephen, but, um, you know, feel free to follow up or, um, you know, maybe that's a good idea for a future show or something. Oh uh, yeah. I mean, we might be able, I mean, I just gave a nice example for it, but if, if you folks want more detail on that, maybe multiple leg stuff, we could certainly go into that for you. If you folks like, if you're having problems or if it's just needlessly obtuse, like it is apparently for over there at toss for Steven, by all means, uh, send in your questions or comments. Chances are, if you have the question listeners, 
Uh, somebody else will have it. Well, let's squeeze in one more, Dan, because we went long on, the, on those first two. I'll squeeze in as many people as I can here on the show because they're all, they're all so patient sending in their questions. Let's go out here to Mentak. He's got a good question as well. Mentak says, I know the traditional butterfly is done one by two by one. Have you thought about increasing the ratio on this trade? Perhaps one by three by one. Uh, my cursory back test shows pretty decent returns in scenarios where you would normally buy a traditional butterfly. Have you thought about using this type of adjusted butterfly, as he calls it? Yeah, you know, we've talked about this kind of thing on the show in the past, Mentac. I encourage you to go back and check out our episodes on ratio spreads. That's where this comes in at the end. That's really what you're talking about. You're talking about ratio spreads here. I know it's in the guise of a butterfly, but remember, if you all you're doing is just adding more short contracts to that middle leg, that guts leg, guess what you're doing? You're just putting on a ratio spread. You're not covered. The butterfly is covered at the end of the day. You're long one in, in most traditional examples, and then short two, and then long one again. So net, you're covered. You have no net short units. What you're talking about now is effectively just being in your one by three by one example. You're just net short one unit. So guess what's going to happen in that example? You might collect a little more on the, on the outset, but also your broker is going to tie up a whole hell of a lot more capital for that trade because you're effectively net short a call to the upside. If it's, let's assume it's a call example. It could be in any direction, obviously. Uh, but most of you go the call route. Most of you go buying flies. So that's probably the way you're leaning out there. So it might look cool. Like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm, if I can buy this fly for 38 cents, now I can do it for nearly even because I add a third leg. That's awesome. Why wouldn't I do that? Uh, the answer is because you're net naked short units to the upside. So if this explodes in that direction, it's going to be very costly. And we saw what could happen back in the meme stock days. Stocks can explode up or they can explode really in either direction. You could do this on the put wing too and, and have it explode to the downside. And you're going to be net short a unit, which we always counsel you not to do. And then also your broker is going to tie up a whole lot of capital for this trade. So you can look at your account and say, wait a minute, where'd all my buying power go? And it went all to this trade because you're net short units now. Uh, so just remember, there is no free lunch out there, Mentech. It might look cool. It might look decent in your cursory back test. But when you put it into practice, there's going to be a lot of other things that happen that maybe you're not a big fan of. Dan, anything you want to add for Mentech and his adjusted butterfly strategy one by three by one, sir? Yeah, I think what Mark pointed out about the net short units is pretty important, you know, because if you think about it, whenever you sell an option, the most you can make is the premium you collect. So you're taking in some extra premium and it, presuming this is a call. Um, uh, what do we call it? Adjusted butterfly or, um, yes, it's an adjusted. It doesn't say which way I assume to call fly. Yeah. That's the way most of them so, do it. So if we say this is a call, basically the wings, the, the wing to the downside would maybe end up in a profit if it gets down there, which is nice because then there's one side of the trade where, you know, you can't lose on where with a traditional butterfly, you could leave, lose if it goes too high or too low, presuming, we're selling the at the monies, but you know, then if it, so there's limited extra profit there and it, it could make that a better situation for you. But the big trade off is the upside. You end up being short a net call. So once the stock ends up getting up above the break, even, you know, then it's all risk. So you better have a pretty tight management plan and um, be ready to put that plan into use if you trade this. But like I say all the time on this show, <clears throat> every strategy has its own use case, and um, there might be a time when the strategy uh, really makes the most sense. So, um, you know, keep keep looking at it, keep tinkering with it, and um, yeah, you never know. You might just pull one out of your uh, hat, I guess we'll say, uh, sometime when it just seems to make the most sense. So, yeah, I like it. Oh, Dan's a fan. Dan's a fan to your adjusted butterfly bit of strategery. Who was that there? Uh, Mentac. Intriguing stuff. Just keep in mind everything we said. Obviously, there's going to be a, a cost with this, quite literally, in terms of opportunity costs. So as long as you're cool paying that and also you have a plan, as we said, for in case this thing goes against you, at the end of the day, net short units, usually not the road to riches. <laughs> <laughs> so have that plan in place as well. How are you going to get the heck out of this thing if it explodes against you, which you don't say what underlyings you're doing, what direct, any of that kind of stuff. We're just assuming traditional call flies. 
Uh, but uh, that said, there's risks in all this stuff. There's, you're not, there's no free lunch in the world of options. I wish you could get all the premium for no extra risk. Unfortunately, not really how that works. Unfortunately, also, listeners, that music means we come to the end. Man, a wild, a woolly, an epic episode of Options Bootcamp. You folks really brought it today in the mail call. If you have more questions you've sent in, don't worry, we'll get to them on future shows. Sometimes sometimes you folks send in epic treatises that require a little bit more dissection out here on the show. But again, keep them coming. At Options is the place to go, of course, if you have questions or feedback. Uh, questions at theoptionsinsider.com also works. Of course, if you join our pro, you can listen to this live right now, so you're already hearing this. And, of course, you can ask questions live in there as well. And you'll be available in about 15 minutes when we kick off our pro Q&A with the options guy himself, which should be a fun one out there. Maybe I'll let him pontificate on your uh, settlement question there, Stephen, as well. He's a former broker guy. He'll probably have some interesting insight into that as well. But before we go, Mr. Dan, if folks want to reach out any questions or comments for you over there in the land of MTM, where should they go? What should they do? Uh, yep, we love to help. Make your way in over to MarketTicker.com, two T's in a row, and just click on Join Free. And uh, and if you do it today, I'm going to send you an invite to our uh, online training on how to trade earnings. There you go. So uh, get it done out there today. This will be hitting the network later today, so you will have time today to do so if you are so inclined, listeners. And, of course, if you are so inclined, you want to join us for the Pro Q&A. You're going to miss today's because it's kicking off in a few minutes. So that will be after this show goes live on the On Demand Network. But you will be able to get it on demand. And, of course, you'll be able to join us live for everything else we do this week, including options oddities on Friday where a lot of great trades coming down the pike from there. A lot of you asking interesting questions about trades you folks have on or maybe want to do. So that's an interesting aspect of that show as well. You get all that. In your hot little hands, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro. Got to get on out of here. Back again in a little bit with a great pro Q&A session for all you pro members. Back again throughout the rest of the week with our usual assortment of content. Make sure you're subscribed to the full network to get all that, listeners. And then, of course, back again next Education Wednesday, another episode of Options Bootcamp. Stay safe out there, everybody. Options Bootcamp is brought to you by Tasty Trade. Ready to shred your paper trades? Then trade at Tasty Trade, the broker that gives you what you need to make your own way. Get smarter every day with options education and research tools. Analyze your risks clearly with a potential profit and loss graph. Chart your way with hundreds of indicators. Make the numbers make sense and find the opportunities only you can see. Trade it with fewer clicks on an easy-to-use platform. Mobile, desktop, web. Supported by a trade desk with decades of combined experience. Stocks, options, futures, and more. You choose, you trade. Get what you need to make smart moves. Go to tastytrade.com slash pod to see for yourself, genius. Tasty Trade Incorporated is a registered broker-dealer and member of FINRA, NFA, and SIPC. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. <laughs>